Good morning, dear students. Today we will study the topic of transpiration, the evaporative loss of water. Transpiration means the loss of water from the aerial parts of a plant. Aerial parts are those parts which are exposed to the atmospheric air. Roots absorb water and this water needs to reach the leaves to enable photosynthesis. But when it reaches the leaves and other aerial plant parts and they exchange gases, the diffusion of water vapor takes place alongside. This is called as transpiration. So let's study transpiration a little more. So first we are going to study the bell jar experiment for transpiration. The bell jar experiment has a number of variables, a number of ways in which it can be performed. So let's study a few of them. The first bell jar experiment involves bell jar A, B, C, three different bell jars. In bell jar A and B, we take a potted plant, which is well watered, and the pot and the soil is covered with plastic. In bell jar B and C, we take cobalt chloride paper. Cobalt chloride paper is an indicator for water vapor. It is blue when it is dry, but turns pink when it absorbs moisture. We leave the three bell jars out in the open for an hour or so. After an hour, we notice that there are droplets which are formed in bell jar A and B on the inner surface. No such clear liquid droplets are formed in bell jar C. The bell jar B, along with formation of clear liquid droplets, shows its color changing of cobalt chloride paper from blue to pink, indicating that the clear liquid which is formed is nothing but water vapor. So this tells you that the plant is transpiring. This water is basically the transpired water which has accumulated on the inner surface. The bell jar experiment can also be done using only two bell jars, where one is the control setup and the second is your actual experimental setup. The experimental setup will have a potted plant where the soil and the pot is covered with water and the plant will be transpiring. When it transpires, we have accumulation of water droplets on the inner surface. In the control setup, we do not have any plant, so there is no formation of water droplets, clearly indicating that the pot and the soil did not produce any water vapor. Whatever water droplets accumulated, they came from the plant, indicating that green plant parts transpire. Now, this process of transpiration can be studied easily at home. You can cover any plant part with a piece of polythene paper, wrap it up nicely, and after an hour or so, or maybe some more, depending upon the rate of transpiration, we actually are able to see mist formation on the inner surface and even deposition of a clear liquid, which will tell us that this liquid has come from the leaves by the process of transpiration. Now in the bell jar experiment, when we perform the bell jar experiment, we have a control set up with the pot and the soil covered with polythene paper in both cases, whether it's the control setup or the experimental setup and the plant is exposed. Now, when we perform this experiment, we use a bell jar. The bell jar is basically made up of glass. Being glass, it is waterproof. It will prevent any loss of water from the inside to the external atmosphere or any external atmosphere from the atmosphere from entering inside, thereby making the system completely isolated and confirming that the water vapor which comes on the inner surface comes from the bell jar only, comes from the plant inside the bell jar only. So after some hour or so, we are able to notice droplets of water formed on the inner surface of the bell jar, clearly indicating that the plant has transpired water. Now, this water can be 
this transpiration can be measured by the first method called as the weighing method. Now, in weighing method, what do we have is a container. It can be a gas jar, it can be a beaker, it can be a measuring jar filled with water and a twig or a plant shoot is inserted inside it. The upper surface of that water layer, water is covered with a thin layer of oil. And the initial weight of this entire setup is taken. We leave this as such undisturbed for an hour or so. And we take the final weight again. We find out that the initial weight of this experimental setup is more than the final weight. Why is this so? Because the leaves have been transpiring water to compensate for the water lost the xylem in the stem has absorbed water from inside the container and this has led to a decrease in weight of the entire experimental setup, clearly telling us that transpiration leads to loss of water vapor from a plant. Now, how can the rate of transpiration be measured? If we don't want to measure the weight of water lost, we want to measure the rate of transpiration. It can be measured by using a device called as a potometer. Now, a potometer, in very general sense, uses a cut twig placed in a container of water, and this draws in an air bubble. The air bubble moves up to a particular length in the capillary tube. We calculate the distance moved per unit time, which will be equal to transpiration. So the distance moved per unit time is actually the rate of uptake of water. This is almost equal to the amount of transpiration. So the first potometer which we use is called as Genong's potometer. Now in Genong's potometer, this measures the rate of water intake by a plant. A Genong's potometer can have this particular shape, but basic requirement is it is bent at two angles. It's made up of glass. It has got a reservoir filled with water and having a knob. It may have a ruler attached to its capillary tube or the capillary tube may have markings on its surface to enable us to take readings. So while using it, we fill the entire apparatus with water and we insert a twig inside. For inserting the twig, we need to take care of these two factors, that the twig should be cut obliquely, that means in a slanting manner to increase the surface area, that the twig should be cut underwater to prevent any entry of air bubble in the xylem. If air will enter in the xylem, then the experimental setup will not be able to absorb any water, thereby preventing us from having an accurate reading. The insertion of twig is done, and then this entire place is covered with a thick layer of Vaseline. We momentarily take out this bent end of the capillary tube from this colored water, and we reinsert it back. When we do this, some air enters in this bent tube. We open the knob of the reservoir to ensure that only one air bubble remains and the surplus move out. And then we start with our experiment. The moment the capillary and the bubble reaches the marked end of the capillary tube where markings are there, we start taking readings. So the distance traveled by air bubble will be calculated and the time will be measured. And this gives us the rate of water intake by a plant, which is roughly equal to transpiration. Just like Genong's potometer, we have a farmer's potometer. This also measures the rate of water intake by a plant. But here, there is no bent tubing. We have a container having water. The third potometer is called as a Darwin's potometer. Now, in case of Darwin's potometer, this measures the suction force created due to transpiration. Now, when we say suction force, it basically means the amount of transpiration pull created. 
you have tall trees really tall trees which also have the leaves on top in the canopy and these leaves will require water so the leaves are transpiring water they are performing photosynthesis and when they are performing photosynthesis and they are transpiring water they create an upward pull of water they create a transpiration pull that is called as suction force so the darwin pot darwin's potometer basically helps to measure the suction force created due to transpiration we have the garius's potometer this demonstrates unequal transpiration from the two surfaces of a dorsi ventral leaf now a dorsi ventral leaf is a leaf which is found in dicot plants it has an upper surface which is called as the dorsal surface and a lower surface called as the ventral surface both of these surfaces are covered with bell jars to which a manometer containing mercury is attached now mercury here will make the entire setup airtight preventing any entry of external moisture in the system or move movement of any moisture from inside to outside so your entire experimental setup becomes airtight we have pre-weighed two calcium chloride vials vials are very small test tubes having a very small diameter so calcium chloride is placed in both these vials equal weights of these two vials are taken calcium chloride is an absorbent of moisture so this entire experimental setup is left outside in the air for an hour or so afterwards we weigh the vials we find out that both the vials have gained in weight but the vial which is attached onto the lower surface has gained more in weight as compared to the vial attached to the upper surface this happens because more transpiration takes place from the lower surface or the ventral surface of a dorsi ventral leaf less transpiration takes place from the upper surface of a dorsi ventral leaf now why this happens because the lower surface is exposed away from sunlight so in case of dicot plants they have more stomata on the lower surface indicating that this calcium chloride while absorbed more moisture because more was provided by the increased number of stomata on the lower surface and less was absorbed by the lesser number of stomata on the upper surface so garius's potometer demonstrates unequal transpiration more on the lower surface less on the upper surface in case of a dorsi ventral leaf so this is all about the various kinds of potometers and the basic introduction to transpiration we will study more about the types in the next video thank you very much and god bless you all